Hey everyone, Professor Hank here. So today we're going to talk about mathematical expressions in C++. We'll talk about operator precedence. We'll talk about associativity. And we'll talk about grouping of expressions as well as how to convert mathematical formulas into C++ code. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's start by defining what an expression is. And a mathematical expression is just, you know, like two plus four, right? So you could have a variable int sum, and then you could do something like sum equals two plus four. So in this case, the two plus four is a mathematical expression. Or maybe you've got uh, something like sum equals x plus y, right? Where x and y are a couple of integer variables, x plus y mathematical expression. You could have just something like this even. You could say sum equals x, another mathematical expression. You could have sum equals 3 plus x divided by 4, another mathematical expression. So that's what these things are right here, mathematical expressions. And an expression is part of an overall assignment statement in these examples. So in order to make more complex mathematical expressions that contain multiple mathematical operators, such as what we have here on line 12, we have to understand this concept known as operator precedence. So operator precedence provides the rules for the order in which you should resolve things. So for example, you know, if you have something that looks like this, sum equals three plus two divided by four, what's gonna be the correct answer? Well, the correct answer is gonna depend upon which order you process the operators in. So if you do three plus two divided by four, then you're gonna end up with an answer that is five divided by four or 1.25, right? But if you do the division first, then you're gonna end up with three plus one half. What's three plus one half? Well, that's 3.5. So you could get two completely different answers depending on which order you process the operators in. So in C++, we have this thing that is called operator precedence, operator precedence. And it goes like this, okay? You have three levels. You've got, on the first level, you have unary negation. So that's basically something like negative five, right? If you just had negative five plus two, then this gets processed first. This negative here changes that positive five into a negative five. And so negative five plus two would be negative three, right? So unary negation happens first, then you have multiplication, division, and modulus, okay? So finally, you have addition and subtraction, all right? So if we have an expression, a statement that contains an expression like this, negative five plus two times six, okay? What's the answer going to be? How do we figure this out? If we look at our operator precedence, then we know that unary negation happens first, so this is negative five, and then we know that multiplication happens. So this is going to evaluate to negative five plus 12, and then that is going to evaluate to seven. Okay, now let's say that we had an expression that looked like three times two minus six. Okay, so if we look at our operator precedence, then we don't have unary negation in here. We don't have like negative five right here, right? So we're only dealing with multiplication, division, or modulus, and addition and subtraction. So the multiplication happens before the subtraction. So three times two evaluates first, so that's six. And then we do the subtraction, so six minus six equals zero. Okay, so now we have to talk about what's known as associativity associativity. So what that has to do, these are rules for what happens if you have something that looks like this equal, sum equals five plus two minus three, right? So plus and minus are at the same level on the same tier of operator precedence. So which goes first? Do you do the plus or do you do the minus? In C++, you have left to right associativity. So that means that when they are on the same level precedence, you just process from left to right. So this is going to equal Five plus two happens first, since that's the operator on the left. So it's gonna equal seven minus three, and then that converts to four. Okay, so let's see another example of that. So if we have sum equals three plus three modulus two minus six. Okay, well, how's that gonna work? Well, the modulus is on this level of precedence. So that is going to be processed before the plus the minus. 
So this is going to equal 3 plus, well now what's 3 modulus 2? Well, 3 divided by 2 is 1 with 1 left over. So 3 modulus 2 is 1. So it's going to be 3 plus 1 minus 6. And then the associativity kicks in and we go from left to right. So that's going to equal 4. 3 plus 1 is 4. And then we have the minus 6 to deal with still. And then what's left? 4 minus 6 equals minus 2. Okay, so that's how associativity works. Okay, now we can override these rules by using grouping. So our grouping symbols are just parentheses. We can change the order in which things happen. So we can say something like this. We can say sum equals minus 5 plus 2 inside of the parentheses and then times 6. So now this changes the order. Whatever's in the innermost parentheses goes first. So that means that instead of doing multiplication first, we then do our parentheses first because parentheses changes the order. So negative five plus two is gonna be negative three times six. And now negative three times six is negative 18. So let's look at another example. So sum equals, we'll do the three plus three, put that in parentheses, modulus two minus six, Okay, now what's that going to equal? Well, again, parentheses goes first, so 3 plus 3 is 6. Okay, and then we have our modulus 2 minus 6. And then that's going to equal what? Well, modulus goes before subtraction. So 6 modulus 2 is 0 because 2 divides 6 3 times with nothing left over. So we've got 0 minus 6. And then finally, what's left, 0 minus 6 is minus 6. Now we can group in many ways. So we could do something like this. We could say 3 plus 3 modulus and then group the 2 minus 6. Now here's where associativity is going to come in. You know, you can kind of modify your operator precedence up here and we'll add, you know, grouping at the very top of it. So grouping, we have two groups here. And so since they're on the same level of operator precedence, we're going to use that left to right associativity. So the 3 plus 3 is going to happen first. Okay, so 3 plus 3 is 6. And then we've got modulus 2 minus 6. But this second group, is going to be higher precedence than the modulus. So that is going to process first. So this is going to be 6 modulus, 2 minus 6. Now what's 2 minus 6? Minus 4. And so finally, 6 modulus negative 4 is what? It is uh, 2 because 6 divided by negative 4 is negative 2 with 2 left over. Okay, so now let's keep in mind that there is no exponentiation operator in C++. So what does that mean? It means you can't do any powers, right? So maybe you've seen like on message boards or something where people will say, you know, two squared and they'll do something like this, right? And th that's how they're representing it. Well, that doesn't work in C++. Okay, so this is, this doesn't mean two squared. If you want to do exponentiation, then what you have to do is you have to include the CMath library. So you'd come up here with your pound includes and you do pound include CMath and that gives you access to a special function called the pow function. And so then you can call that function, then you can have your base, which is gonna be the first number you put in here, so two, and then the second number is your exponent. So then that is going to give you, or that's gonna to evaluate to two squared. And so then we could put that in a variable, say X. Okay, so then x equals pow two comma two. This is two squared, two squared is four, and that'll be placed inside of the x, right? So x contains four, that's right? So that's how you do exponentiation in C++. So finally, let's talk about, you know, how you would convert mathematical formulas into C++, right? We're, we're limited in what we can do because we're using text here. So, you know, let's say that you wanted to write an expression for calculating, you know, the slope of a line, right? Which is, you know, M equals Y1 minus Y0 over X1 minus X0. Well, you can't really you know, write that like you would with pencil. So we have to write our expression so that it evaluates in the same way that the mathematical formula would uh, evaluate. So let's say that we had, you know, y1 equals um, 3 and y0 equals 2. And we'll say x1 equals 4 and x0 is equal to negative 5 or something like this, right? So if we were going to represent this in C++, we have to be very, very careful, right? Because that numerator part 
evaluates first and then the denominator part does. So, you know, you might be tempted just to write it something like this where you say, oh, well, y1 minus y0, right? And then that's going to be divided by x1 minus x0. And that's kind of close to what the formula for the slope of a line is. Well, you're not there yet, right? Because remember the order of operations. So what should happen is that the difference of the y should be calculated first, and then the difference of the x's should be calculated. And then, you know, those differences need to be divided by each other. Well, because of the order of operations, that's not what's going to happen as it's written. Instead, what's going to happen is, is y0 is going to be divided by x1 first. So we need to use grouping symbols to make sure that this gets done correctly because we need to find the difference of the y's first and then the difference of the x's and then we can divide those differences. Okay, so that's one example there. And one last example, and this is a common mistake that I see students make all the time, and that is just finding the average, say, of three numbers. You know, so if you wanted to find the average, you know, you might do something like this. You might say average equals, and then you got your three numbers, right? Three plus two plus six. And then you divide that by three, right? Because it's three numbers. You find the sum of the three numbers. You divide by three. That's your average. Well, if you just write it like this, it's wrong, right? Why? Because again, that operator precedence. So when you're finding an average, you find the sum, then divide the sum by three, right? Well, here, that's not what's happening. The six gets divided by three first because of that operator precedence. So what you end up with is three plus two plus six divided by three, which is three, right? And then you go left to right, you have that left to right associativity. So three plus two gets evaluated first, and then you have what's left is eight, right? And so the average of three, two, and six is not eight, right? It should be the sum of three, two, and six, which is 11 divided by three. So this is clearly wrong. So what we have to do is we have to use that grouping symbol, right? So we have to use parentheses. So that guarantees that the sum happens first and then the division. So now what we have is we have what's in parentheses get executed first. So we have, you know, three plus two, which equals five, right? And then we've got that six left over and then the five plus six executes, and then we just have to divide the 11 um, by three, which is like what, about 3.666, repeating of course. Okay, so now you have everything you need to know to build complex mathematical expressions with multiple operators in C++. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.